Praise God, brothers and sisters out there. Thank you so much for following my music, daily meditations in the Word of God. Once again, it's Brother Morris with you, sharing the Word of God. And I want to continue our series on how we can live two happy lives in Christ Jesus. And today, I'm answering the question on that is, that is a puzzle to many people out there, especially those who are in prayer, and even those who are not in the life of prayer. They are always asking themselves, how come those who do not pray are successful? How come those who do not pray are living happy lives? My dear brother, my dear sister, you, you, don't even, you are not even sure if they are really living a successful life. And I've already told you that what is a successful life? A successful life is a life that is lived in Jesus. Any success that we receive outside Jesus, outside the realm of the Spirit, outside the realm of God, it is not a successful life. It is something good, but not a successful life. So this question that is always asked by many people, how come those who don't pray are always successful? I want to use two scriptures to, to, to answer this question. And that is Psalm 37 and Sirach chapter 11. But before that, Jesus warns us in Mark 12, 24. What does he say? He says, Jesus answered them and he said, How wrong are you? And you, and do you know why? Do you know why you are wrong? It is because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. So my dear brother, my dear sister, Jesus is saying many of us go wrong. Many of us are in error. Many of us are led astray because we do not know the scriptures. I think that's why Hosea 4, 6 says that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. So what does it mean for the wicked to prosper? And many people are asking themselves, how come the wicked, those who have no regard for God, are prospering? Psalm 37 from verse 1, I want, to go with you, I want to go through with you. So it says, do not be worried on the account of the wicked. Don't be jealous of those who do wrong. So the Lord is saying, don't be worried. When you see the wicked prospering, when you see those who have no regard prospering, are you asking yourself, I studied with this person at the university, and now this person is very far of me. I even pray, this person is not praying. And all these kinds of things. This one is going to which doctors, but is is right ahead of me, my dear brother, my dear sister. In the first place, it is very wrong for you to compare yourself with the people of the world, with things that are here on, on earth. Saint Paul says that we should compare ourselves with what is above. We should look at what is above. So, but Jesus is the Lord is saying, do not be worried on the account of the wicked, or be jealous of those who do wrong. They will soon disappear like grass that dries. They will die like plants that wither. Can you imagine that? Trust in the Lord, verse 3, and do good. Live in the land and be safe. So the Lord is saying, trust in the Lord. Do good and surely you will find safety. Verse 4 says, seek your happiness in the Lord and he will give you all your heart's desires. So the Lord is saying, don't be worried about those who are who are prospering in their wicked ways. He's saying, continue to seek your happiness in me. Continue to find your, your joy in me. And sure, I will give you all the desires of your heart. Verse 5 says, give yourself to the Lord. Trust in him and he will help you. Wow. He will make your righteousness shine like noon day sun. So the Lord is assuring you that one day, he will make your righteousness shine to the whole world and it will declare that you are truly a child of God. And that's what was in the life of Abraham. Bible says in Genesis 24 verse 1. That Abraham was a, such a holy man of God. Who was successful in everything that he did. Verse 7. Psalm 37. Verse 7. And it says. Be patient and wait for the Lord to act. So don't look at the, those who are prospering in their wicked ways. The Lord is saying. They will disappear very soon. And he, until he says. Be patient and wait for the Lord to act. Do not be worried about those who prosper or those who succeed in their evil plans. Don't give in to worry or to anger. I know this is a temptation of many people. You see those who are, who are successful in their wicked plans and you get worried. You become angry, you even become jealous. The Lord is saying in verse 8 of Psalm 37, do not give in to worry or anger. It only leads to trouble. Verse 9, those who trust in the Lord will possess the land, but the wicked will be driven out. 
So my dear brother, my dear sister, if you continue trusting the Lord, if you continue to walk in the ways of the Lord, it will just be a matter of time, not even how. But the Lord says you will possess their land. And I think that's wh why Ecclesiastes chapter 2, somewhere it says that the evil will, God will make the evil go out there and gather the riches and wealth, and then eventually he will give it to the what? To those who are righteous, to those who are seeking for the Lord. Verse, verse 10, it says, Soon the wicked will disappear. You may look for them, but you won't find them. I know you are many people out there. You know many people are prospering in their wickedness. Back then, who are now nowhere to be seen. Why? Because they had no regard for God. Verse 11. But be humble. But the humble will possess the land and enjoy prosperity and peace. The wicked plot against good people and glare at them with hate. But the Lord laughs at the wicked because he knows they will soon be destroyed. Let them look at you with envy. Let them look at you with malice. Let them plot against you because you are a holy child of God. Because you are seeking to please the Lord. Because you are standing for the truth. The Lord is saying, what, what will happen? The Lord himself is laughing at them. And because of that, they will soon disappear. Verse 16. The little that a good person owns is worth more than the wealth of the wicked. Because the Lord will take out the strength of the wicked, but protect those who are good. Verse 25. I'm old now. I have lived a long time. But I have never seen good people abandoned by the Lord. Or their children begging for food. Or at all times they give freely and lend to others. And their children are a blessing. Whose children are a blessing? The children of the righteous. Which people will never beg for food? Those who seek for the Lord. Which people will live a long time? Those who seek for the Lord. My dear brother, my dear sister, continue to seek for the Lord. Continue to walk in the ways of the Lord. And he will never desert you. And I want to end with Sirach 11, verse 20, 22. And I will, write, I will just read it. Sirach chapter 11, 20, 22. It says, Stand by your duty and stick to it. Grow old at your work. Grow old in what you are doing. Grow old in whatever you are doing that is in the Lord. Do not be jealous of what sin has achieved. Just stick to your own work and trust the Lord. It is very easy. For the Lord to make a poor man suddenly rich. Devout people will receive the Lord's blessing as their reward. And that blessing can be given in a moment. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. God is saying, in just a twinkling of an eye, he can make you rich. In just a twinkling of an eye, he can make you a blessing. Stick with the Lord. Be like King David who said in Psalm 84, Verse 10, I would rather be a watchman at the house of the door of the Lord, at the door of the house of the Lord, than being than sitting comfortably in the homes, in the bungalows of the wicked. My dear brother, my dear sister, you are not running in vain. Continue to be devoted. Continue to seek for the Lord. Even if things seem not to be working now, it's a matter of time. It's a question of time. I've seen this in the lives of many people, in my own life, and we give glory to the Lord. Your Lord is coming, and at the right time, He will come and save you. He will come and bless you. He will restore you, and He will announce you to the world as His blessed child. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord.